Is eight gigabytes of RAM enough for video editing on the new M1 MacBook Air? Short answer, actually, yes it is, but there are a few caveats, which I will go into more detail on later in the video, so stay tuned. I've spent the last few days testing an eight gigabyte and 16 gigabyte RAM version of the M1 MacBook Air, and my findings are, if you're on a strict budget, or if the editing you plan on doing is your typical MP4, 4K, and under stuff, the 8GB RAM version will be totally fine. However, if you have the budget for 16GB, I still do definitely recommend going with that version as the only downside is increased cost at the beginning. And to find out why I recommend this, keep watching the video. Now I wanted to start off with the current biggest issue surrounding RAM on the new M1 Max, and that is almost nothing is optimized, even now almost two months after the M1's release. Even software that is supposedly optimized in reality often isn't, it just means it's no longer running off Rosetta 2. DaVinci Resolve, for example, has a 17.1 beta software for the M1, but I've had many issues with this, including crashing and most notably some video codecs not even able to render or even be imported onto the timeline. I do understand this is a beta version, but it definitely sums up the current situation for the M1 Max. Note, I had none of these issues when using the 17.0 version of Resolve running on Rosetta 2. Adobe Premiere Pro isn't far behind. It's still running off Rosetta 2, and to be fair, it performs quite well, but it's nowhere near the level of optimization it needs to be at. Let's have a look at some of these tests. Test results. As you can see, no matter what program or codec you're rendering with, there's almost no difference between 8GB and 16GB of RAM. In some cases, I even found the 8GB version to render faster than the 16GB version. Super, super weird. Now, it has been proven that the RAM on the M1 Max is super fast already, and 8GB is often enough, as you've seen from some of my previous videos on this topic, but these results indicate to me that editing software right now just has no idea how to take advantage of the additional RAM on the 16 gigabyte version. But what about actual editing performance? Is there a difference when scrubbing the timeline or adding fusion effects? Well, I did a test on Resolve using some 4K.mp4 footage to find out. So I just wanted to do some real life testing on both of these machines. Now, as you can see here, this is the M1 MacBook Air in space gray. This is the eight gigabyte RAM version. And then we have the 16 gigabyte RAM M1 MacBook Air in the traditional silver color. Now I will be doing some tests on Premiere Pro and also DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is on the 17.1 beta version, which is optimized for Apple Silicon. Unfortunately, Adobe Premiere Pro is not, so that is actually running off Rosetta 2, so we will see a performance drop. So first things first, let's open up DaVinci Resolve and see which one loads the quickest. So three, two, one, load. So as you can see there, they're both pretty much the exact same. Um, every time I've done it, it's either one or the other one just starts up quicker. It's pretty random, um, but they're pretty much exactly the same as far as I can test. Now, if we open up this test project that I put together, like I mentioned before, I'm not gonna be doing any kind of hardcore 8K or red footage in this particular test. This is gonna be more of a real life test. So the majority of people buying an M1 MacBook Air are probably only going to be doing some light editing and the particular footage they're gonna be using is probably just gonna be like a .mp4 out of their camera like me. So I have a Sony A7 Mark III and I'm just using the 4K .mp4 codec to record my videos and edit them in this particular video. So if I just play this, you can see it plays without any issues. We're getting the full 25 FPS. Now this is 4K footage playing on a 4K timeline. It also has LUTs and color correction added. Um, you can see I have some fusion titles here and there, and I also have some fusion transitions. The fusion transitions don't play back as well as I would have liked. So if I skip forward to a transition and then I press play, you can see there it's quite stuttery. It actually, you know, I'm only getting about two FPS. Um, so it really doesn't like fusion transitions. But if we go to something like a fusion title, you can see there that works perfectly fine once it's had a chance to pre-render. 
If you don't know how to do that, you can come up here to playback and you can go uh, fusion memory cache, you can turn that to auto. And that essentially means that things like these fusion titles, you can see the blue bar there, they will actually render in the background. So the next time you come to play them, they should play smoothly. And as you can see here, if I zoom in a little bit, I can scrub and that works perfectly fine. Now, in terms of actual scrubbing, if we skip forward to a 15 minute vlog I shot the other day, if we do some scrubbing on both timelines, again, this has color correction and a LUT applied. You can see there's really no issues there with the scrubbing. Um, obviously, it is .mp4, so it's a very, very compressed codec, so it won't be perfectly smooth in terms of scrubbing. Uh, but again, like this is at full 4K resolution. Uh, the timeline proxy mode is set to off, so you can obviously see that it's playing back at the full 4K resolution without really any issues at all. And although you will see some dropped frames here and there, and because it is a .mp4 file, it is very, very compressed. So what Resolve and the computer is having to do is it's having to actually essentially unpack each frame before displaying it on the screen. So that's why it might be a bit choppy. But again, this is totally usable in terms of editing. I've had no issues and I really haven't seen any difference between eight gigabytes and 16 gigabytes here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually edit a Fusion title. So you can see this particular title is 2020. So let's change this to 2021. And then you can actually see the blue bar will change to red on both of these. And it's actually going to start pre-rendering in the background this particular title. So you can see here the 16 gigabyte version has just the tiniest advantage, but they've both finished at pretty much the exact same time. Now I have done this particular test multiple times and I've noticed that the 16 gig model just narrowly beats out the eight gigabyte, but you're really not gonna notice it at all. But what about Premiere Pro? Well, I used some of the same footage and did some rendering and some testing, and I found that again, just like DaVinci Resolve, I really couldn't find that many differences between the two, especially when actually editing the footage. In terms of rendering, there were a few minor ones, which I'll touch on later. Moving on to actual RAM usage, looking at the activity monitor results while rendering, we can see that Resolve is using on average an additional three gigabytes of RAM on the 16 gigabyte version compared to the eight gigabyte version during a render. Yet the render time was almost exactly the same on both machines. Doing the same thing when rendering on Adobe Premiere Pro showed something similar, but this time it's clear to see that Premiere was capped at around 4.5 gigabytes of RAM and wasn't able to use more, likely due to being unoptimized and running on Rosetta 2. So what does this all mean? Well, it's simple. Editing programs almost certainly haven't been optimized to truly take advantage of what a 16 gigabyte RAM M1 Mac has to offer. I said in a previous video that it would likely take a year to see the full performance of an M1 system when everything is updated and optimized, and I still stand by that statement. This means we won't be able to tell for sure if the 16 gigabyte version has any big performance increases over the eight gigabyte version until this happens. That being said, there are some advantages to a 16 gigabyte RAM model that are available to you right now. Firstly, you are able to multitask much more when rendering or editing compared to the eight gigabyte version. Looking at these activity monitor screenshots, you can clearly see that the 16 gigabyte RAM version has at least five gigabytes free RAM for you to web browse or use Photoshop with, for example. Now, if you tend to multitask a lot while rendering, this is gonna have a big impact on your render time. So if you do have that additional eight gigabytes of RAM on the 16 gigabyte version, you're gonna see a drastically reduced render time because of that extra RAM able to be used for those other programs you're using at the same time. Also, if you're a Final Cut Pro user, Max Tech has already shown there is a big difference in render time between the two RAM models, but only if you're working with really high quality footage like 6K B-RAW or 8K RED RAW footage from a RED camera, which to be honest, you almost certainly won't be editing anyway using an entry-level MacBook Air. Although you definitely still can, see my previous video in the top right. 
The reality is that most of you guys will be editing GoPro or standard .mp4 full frame camera footage like I am. So that is it. My recommendation is to only buy a 16 gigabyte RAM M1 Mac for editing if you have the extra cash laying around or you need extra multitasking capabilities and plan to edit at a level above standard 4K footage. Otherwise, the 8GB version is totally fine. If you're a more hardcore editor and you'll be editing B-RAW or Red-RAW footage, for example, you likely won't even be considering an entry-level MacBook and you'll be holding out for the new M1X range, which will be released soon. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. But apart from that, I will catch you guys in the next one.